what is going on today we're going to go over some hand speed techniques and how to improve your hand speed a bit uh, I don't have any microphones or anything set up today so the audio is going to be what it is but uh, I'll go over a few of my warm-up routines and what I do for practice which has really been helping me lately so for starters you're going to need a metronome and some sort of a stopwatch to time yourself I use a visual metronome often on my phone it's you know you get the nice pictures and everything like that, and it goes up to as many BPM as I need. I think this one maxes out. Uh, this one is 300, so I am not ever going to play 300 beats a minute. And even if you do, divide by two, that would be 150 double times. So that is plenty. Uh, there's hundreds of metronome apps out there. I just prefer one that doesn't have a bunch of advertisements and one that is easy to switch the BPMs without having to do a bunch of stuff. So this speed's a little slow to do eighth notes with just fingers, but you can do wrist, fingers, both. I'll show you when it's a little faster because it's a little easier for me. It doesn't want to really rebound. These are pretty long sticks, but I'll, uh, I'll do some wrist, do some fingers, and then work on both. The main thing is, is your fingers do not leave the sticks. So what's happening is when you hit the drum, the stick should bounce back. Even if you're doing French grip, you loosen your grip. And when that stick bounces back, my hand comes up like this, and I just close it. And then it bounces back up, and I close it, and I close it. And you're basically just working, I'm just pulling my fingers up. I'm never really opening them, it's just when I kind of let go of the stick a little bit, it pushes my fingers open for me. So up, 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 up. I'm using my thumb and pushing against at the same time and that's how you can really get a lot of power with not a ton of motion. Like You'll notice after you do this for a while, if one of your hand isn't as good as the other, um, I noticed my hand was coming, fingers were coming off the stick, and I couldn't play as fast as the other hand. So I really worked on keeping those fingers on the actual stick. And another thing is, if you're doing, I just noticed myself, it's a bad habit, I used to do it a lot. If your pinkies are coming off the stick, it's probably because you're hands are turning around and you don't have control you want to keep those on the stick too one thing I think of to do this is I keep my hand kind of curled like this and I just think of using my pinkies to make the stroke so every time I'm pulling it's like pull 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 and I'm doing the whole thing with my pinkies Another thing when you get going fast, you can be switching from American to German and back and also wrists to just fingers and back to save your energy. It's a little too slow for me to do that right now effectively. Um, I mean, at this speed I don't really use much fingers, but you still want to keep them on the stick. So. This is only a 140 now, but the exercise I usually do is 10 minutes straight of single strokes. I'm not actually going to do that right now, um, but I make sure it's tight. You will, you need to feel the burn at the end of the 10 minutes. If it's not burning and it's not difficult, speed it up, obviously a BPM or two. If it's falling apart, slow it down. Uh, the only thing I'll really allow is if you're, you know, struggling at the end of 10 minutes and maybe it's moving around a little bit or something like that, that that's fine. you got to sometimes push it out a bit. But if it's getting really sloppy and you're missing hits and stuff like that, just slow it down. Um, we'll just try for a second. I'll show you maybe the transition between American, German, and French. It still might not be quite quick enough.
try and get the sound. You want it to sound the same when you're switching from wrists to fingers and all that. You don't want the sound to change. That's the goal. Because there would be nothing like hearing. You know, it's going to sound pretty funny. So if you can... Especially when you get at a higher speed, it doesn't have that four loud, four quiet. I kind of like to, if you can keep it in a constant movement too, you really conserve your energy rather than doing eight and eight and it doesn't sound as obvious. It's almost like the swivel te technique. You know, you don't do four on your feet like this, four like this, it's constant moving. I could do that, well, even at a faster speed, you can do that all day without getting tired. Uh, the biggest thing is also stick height. Make sure your hands are in the same spot. Make sure sticks are coming up the same height. So we'll go up to 175 here. This is about where I'll start to burn. If you can do 10 minutes at 175, you're getting there. Uh, I play a lot faster than my maximum for 10 minutes and that, that's what I found actually increased my blasting speed is, and my endurance is being able to do 10 minutes at 180, 185, 190 has improved my blasting in the 220, 230-ish range. Uh, I think I can maybe get up to a 240 but only for a short burst which, well short enough that I can get away with it in a song but I couldn't do 240 for 10 minutes. I watched a video the other day of a guy doing 230 for 10 minutes and his technique was flawless he wasn't sweating he wasn't struggling and that's where it comes down to focusing keeping your fingers on the sticks and all that we'll just start at 175 here and I'll go for 30 seconds just to show you Sometimes it's you just you can kind of feel it starting to creep up on you a bit, so you go over for just a second, bring it back, go over. You don't need to constantly do it at these speeds if you're not needing to. Another thing is all the power comes for the wrists. So use your wrist as long as you can, and then when you start adding in your fingers after you're using your wrist, it kind of all works as one and you get much more speed. So we'll do 195 for 30 seconds. So we're at 210 now, I couldn't do 210 for 10 minutes, but after I do my 10 minute warm up of whatever my speed is, and write it down so you know, I'll start doing things like... And just try and increase those as long as you can. Um, you've already kind of warmed up, so your hands are a little faster. And you can still do it, you just can't do the full time. So I'll try doing maybe uh, 30 seconds to a minute, two minutes if I can, at a different BPM. But one measure... Uh, those aren't really going to build your speed. You need to actually... 
get used to feeling it and controlling it. I can feel uh, my shoulders even sometimes tense up when I'm at a really high speed. And that was one thing I, I was listening online a while ago. And focus on the muscles you're using. If your shoulders, you know, your legs, your neck and your back are getting tight, you don't need to use those muscles to do this. So that's when just calm down, take a break. You know, my triceps shouldn't be tense right now. So I relax them, still playing. But as you get, you know, you're struggling, you're, you're flexing your arm. Wait a minute, don't need that. And once you can relax, and you know the, the feeling and the technique, you can do it for a lot longer, because you're not, you know, how long can you flex your muscle as hard as you can for? Uh, you're not gonna do that for 10 minutes. So if you're muscling out strokes, you're gonna fall apart. If you're just relaxed, You do it all day. Another thing I focus on is stick height. If you're doing 230 through 70 plus beats a minute, your sticks aren't coming up here. Now, one thing a lot of people confuse is stick height and volume. Just because your stick is only coming to here, I can get a lot of volume. I use my wrist, fingers, and thumb all together. I mean, that's super loud. The faster you go, your stick height's gonna drop a bit, but the one thing you wanna do is keep it at the same height. Don't have, you know, unless you wanna accent notes. A couple other things I like to take a note of. Some people like bigger sticks, some people like smaller sticks, shorter, longer, it is personal preference. I found I was switching to smaller sticks because I thought I could play faster, and every time you switch, they feel so light in your hands, you're flying. This is true, but Unless you have in-ear monitors and you have a nice uh, nice mix and everything else, you can hear everything perfectly. When you get on stage, if you can't hear yourself, you can't hear your ride cymbal, you can't hear your toms or snare, what do you do? You start hitting harder. Well, now you're burning a lot more energy than you wouldn't have been, and you're actually going to be more tired than if you would have just used the big sticks to begin with. I find with bigger sticks, I don't have to hit as hard for the same volume. And that's a big part of why I am getting better endurance is because my sticks have gone up. Also, bigger sticks, you know, they have more weight, so you don't have to throw them down as hard. They rebound really nice. And these are extremely long sticks. Uh, somebody left these at my house, and I just wanted to try them out. I think they're 17 and 3 quarters of an inch, which is ridiculous. But uh, I'm just saying you can use the longest sticks, and you can use really short sticks. Just for an example here, I grabbed a pair of some thick for a 55A. They're between a 5A and a 5B. Uh, quite a bit shorter than those ones I was using just for example. We'll line them up at the bottom there. It's like inches different. So here's a, sh a shorter, more like a regular size stick. I feel like these things are flying, but once again, I can barely hear that on this pad compared to those sticks. And I actually was saying that I switched to the 5A's, 5B's and stuff. Seeing that we don't have any stick endorsements, let's try, uh, we got here, we got some Vader Fatback 3A's. I like these ones quite a bit. You can get some pretty good volume. One thing I noticed about these though, they are shorter. Um, with shorter stick, unless you're really moving up, I tend to play further back on the stick with shorter sticks. And you really, it's, I use a lot more wrist than fingers. So with these ones, seeing that they're so long, it's a lot easier to use fingers. So for guys who, if you're really good with your fingers or if you're not good actually it's a good way to work on your fingers it's just doing the work for me as opposed to these ones I don't I don't even have to use fingers and a 
couple other exercises. I'll do paradiddles. Inverted paradiddles are also good. Double strokes. And for double strokes, once again, slow and clean rather than high speeds. This, that's not a double stroke. That's a buzz roll. Double stroke, hit, hit, right, right, left, left. But, same thing, guys working on your double stroke rolls. Fingers don't leave the stick. And each one gets pulled, every hit. Don't, uh, you know, if you lock your fingers up, it's like your pinkies are doing each one. I'd suggest maybe taking a video of yourself trying this at the beginning and look back in a month because you know one BPM doesn't even sound different on a metronome even when I'm playing I can't tell but after 10 minutes those extra few hits that I've snuck in there you know that's one beat a minute so in 10 minutes that's only 10, 10 beats uh, one beat a minute's not bad too that's 20 hits you would think over the course of 10 minutes that's nothing but it it definitely makes a difference. My left hand used to be real bad. It it bounced all over the snare, and for some reason, I would tend to turn it this way, and which causes the stick to come out. And your pinky comes off, and you open up, and you got to bring it back. One thing you can try doing is moving the stick, you know, right side, left side, front, back. Take take your pinky off. Put your pinky on. See if you can control it. Uh, if I subconsciously I'm not paying attention and I'm getting tired and I'm using my wrist and all of a sudden I'm like here and I realize what's going on I got to bring it back sometimes your hand will move up or down the stick too uh, it slides out so something you can practice is just you know shimmy up and down the sticks like this get used to that so it really only takes if you're right at the bottom here and you're playing and you do one of those, that's a huge difference. Once again, here, way too much. So if you're sliding down, I'm pretty sure one motion will get you back to where you need to be, even a half. And that's a good thing to work on while you're playing. You know, go up one, back one, down one. And, you know, you can go opposite. I'm, I'm way up above where I usually am right now. It's kind of difficult to play. I'm right at the bottom of the stick. See that? Let's say one or two of my hits doesn't sound perfect or it isn't as loud. I would rather do that than ruin the whole part because you know if you're too far up and you can't play it, you're gonna you're gonna screw up. You're gonna miss a hit. You're gonna miss the whole part. Um, like I couldn't maintain a blast speed with my hands up far up the stick for too long. It's just not gonna happen. Same with if uh, if you're using longer sticks and all the weights forward, your arms are going to burn out and you're not going to even be able to finish the song. So to make one little adjustment, and even if you flam a note or something, but hopefully not, you know, if you practice it enough, hopefully you don't even flam a note or anything. There, just moved it. Moved it again. Didn't uh, make a huge difference. So as always, if you like this video, if you hit the uh, like and subscribe underneath, that always helps me out, gives me some sort of recognition, lets me know people are watching it, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I don't claim to have the best technique by any means, but I can play at a somewhat decent speed for a little bit of a time here, so I can help you out the best I can. I am no technique wizard or anything like that, but I have done a lot of trial and error and this seems to work pretty good for me. I've also had the pinkies out and used to have quite bad technique and I don't think anyone should have to go through relearning everything like I did and wasting that much time. So keep your fingers in, keep them on the sticks, wrist and fingers, you can do American, German, I suggest practicing both. Uh, it's a really great way to conserve energy when you're moving back and forth. Don't just learn one way. I do not do traditional grip. I have never really tried it and it is not for me. But. Uh, if you can blast speed like that, all the power to you because it looks really cool.
Anyways, have a great day, and I will post another video shortly.